G'day guys, LV here, and today I'm upgrading my caravan from the old AGM battery to some new lithium batteries. Now, there's a lot of reasons you might want to do this. There's some pros of lithium and some cons. So in this video, I'm going to explain about the pros and cons of lithium over AGM. And as well as I'm going to go through and show you how I change my caravan from AGM to lithium. Now this can be very cost effective or very costly, depending on what you have set up already. Now guys, I do want you to know that I am a qualified electrician, although I am a house basher and not 12 volt stuff. I have a pretty good understanding of the 12 volt gear going on and I have the confidence to tackle this myself. If you do not have the know-how or the confidence, I highly recommend getting someone professional to install because things can very easily go wrong when you're talking about electrical stuff. Okay guys, and it's also probably a good time to let you know that I'm not affiliated with Kings in any way whatsoever. I paid the I paid the retail price for these from the local store here with no discounts and no affiliation. I'm just using King's Gear and I have used King's Gear before and I found them to be very reasonable for the price is cheap and the product quality is generally pretty good in my opinion and, and, and through what I've used anyway. I have used a number of King's Gears over the last probably five, six years. So my recommendation is if you're looking for a brand new caravan and you're building it to your specs, I would just go for lithium over AGM. There is so many benefits of lithium. First of all, I can tell you, having just ripped my AGM out, this one battery weighs more than the two lithiums combined. These two together are about 30 kilos, and I don't exactly know how much, but for me, I, I lifted these together in the AGM, and I can tell you the AGM to me feels heavier. As well as that, AGM, you can only really, really use about 50% of the capacity. So even though this battery here is 120 amp hour AGM, realistically, I get about 60 amp hours of usage out of it before that will cut out. Whereas the lithium, well, this can go down to 80 and still be perfectly fine. 80% of their full capacity, that is. Now, when it comes to cost of changing your caravan over from AGM to lithium, it really comes down to what gear you have in your caravan already. Luckily for me, I have a projector system that's installed in there and that can be reconfigured to charge lithium. So I don't have to get a new charger myself. Then the other cost is down to the batteries. Now, these are probably the cheapest lithium batteries we can find. Um, these cost me, believe it or not, $350 each. So together, under $700, or 349 each. So under $700 together for the both of them. Whereas those brands out there that'll be $7.99 for 120 amp hour batteries and even into the thousands for one 120 amp hour battery. Now, of course, price can dictate the quality, but I've done my research on the Kings 120 amp hour blue top lithium batteries, and they seem to have a very good reputation online, especially for our Kings products. I have seen many videos about capacity tests and also breakdowns where they take the battery apart and show you the insides of them and they seem to have a pretty good reputation for being a pretty good quality battery and for that price that's the only reason i'm able to do this because if i had to pay seven eight hundred dollars for one battery then i could only afford to get one battery but because i could get both these batteries for under seven hundred dollars that's the only what that's the only reason i even bothered to get two batteries and the only other thing i'm going to need is Bit of cable to join them all together, and Kings have the inverter cables, which is designed to run their 3000 watt inverters, which is going to be good enough for me to link my two batteries together as well. And that was only 50 bucks as well. Now, I really don't think I need two 120 amp hour batteries. That's going to give me 240 amp hours of power in my caravan. The reason I say that I don't need it is because I've actually got a three way fridge. And so for most caravans, if you have a compressor fridge, that's going to be your biggest draw for power. And that's going to consume about five amps per hour every hour that it's on. So with me, when I'm off grid, I run the fridge on gas. So I don't actually need it. What I need battery for is to run my lights, some fans, the water pump, range hood, that kind of stuff. So in my previous caravan, we had a 120 amp hour lithium battery for about five years and that battery did fine. We never once ran out of power until the battery died. And so the only reason I went for the 240 amp hours, the two batteries, is to give me a little bit of room in case I want to install an inverter and maybe that way I can power some 240 stuff off grid like 
maybe a microwave for a short while. I mean, at 240 amps, if I get a 3000 watt inverter, King's ones are like 280 bucks. I should be even, I should even be able to run my aircon for like maybe an hour, half an hour, but not, not that I ever plan to do that. Anyways, like I said, that's enough chit chat. And let's get these bad boys installed. Okay guys, so before we get started, we're gonna isolate that battery. And in my case, even though I'm not on 240, I'm still gonna just turn the power off there, unplug. Unplug my uh, charger. And there's actually no way to isolate the solar in my caravan, which is a bit of a bummer. I'm just gonna turn the battery charger off itself. The lights have gone off and that should isolate all the wiring between the battery and the charger. So that should mean there's gotta be no charge going through the battery and now it's safe to disconnect. Okay guys, so to disconnect the battery out of the caravan, obviously I need to get access to my battery boxes first. Now I've already got two battery boxes on my caravan. One is empty, one has got a battery in it already. So to get access in my particular case of the battery box, I've just gotta take I've just got to loosen off a couple of screws, or four screws in this case, and then this cover will come down. So let me go ahead and do that. And then the battery is held in place with these clamps, and there's bracket on top of the battery, so that keeps it all secure. And there's just uh, wing nuts on there, so easy to undo. Now that that is out of the way, I should be able to lift this thing out and onto the ground. Oh my god. Oh man, I always forget how heavy these AGM batteries can be. Might just move this bracket completely out of the way make it easy for me to maneuver. Just enough room, well actually just not quite enough room, there we go, just enough room to lift it out and put it on the ground. Now that it's on the ground, I can go ahead and undo the terminal lugs, terminal screws that hold it all in there, just the two. Alright guys, so 13mm socket for me, get these lugs off. Guys, one, thing's, one thing I'm going to do real quick is just to test those cables coming in from the caravan to make sure there's no voltage on it. All good, so that means there's no charge coming from the charger or anywhere else down to these cabled ends. So it's just safe to leave it as it is. All right, let's get this thing out and the new one in. Oh, bloody hell. All right, guys, so, got my batteries here. Got everything ready to go. And what I've done is this uh, King's wiring system comes with a big fuse. Now I've checked with a few professionals that I know and they said that you don't need to have a fuse linking the two batteries, which makes complete sense because what you're essentially doing is creating one big battery and the BMSs will protect the batteries themselves. So you don't need a fuse. I'm taking that fuse out, save me a little bit of space here. Now, one thing you want to do when you're doing batteries in parallel is you want to make sure that they're both batteries of the same age, and also you wanna make sure that they're both fully charged, right? So I've just charged them both overnight, individually, separately, and, and that's another reason why I ended up buying two batteries straight from the start, is that that way I can make sure they're both brand new batteries, and I'm getting the best performance out of the two batteries. So, I've got them down here, the cables, well, this one here is a meter. The one I just took the fuse out is obviously a little bit shorter. I've laid them out. I'm facing the terminals in towards the chassis. That's how the old battery was wired up. And what you want to do is you want to hook up 
the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive and that will give you a parallel parallel wiring now the other thing is important to get right and I, I see a lot of people don't do this properly you want to have the negative connected to one battery and the positive connected to the other battery that way it's got the cable coming into the battery then to the next battery and then out to the caravan I have seen a lot of people parallel the batteries together and they make both connections on the same battery now you're probably okay with that you, everything's still going to work but you just might not get the best performance out of both the batteries one battery will work, be working just a little bit harder so enough chit chat time for me to rearrange the wiring down here connect these batteries together i'm hoping to be able to do it all on the ground then just chuck it in afterwards one thing i did want to do which i haven't done yet and that's only because i haven't been able to find one in townsville which is where we are right now is i wanted to put a shunt in i want to put a victron smart shunt which is a bluetooth one but the only ones i could find locally are about 280 dollars and in brisbane the same daily shunt cost 115 dollars so i figured i'm going to be in brisbane in two weeks i'll just wait until then and save myself over 150 bucks all hooked up got them paralleled and the... i'll just show you how i've done it so i've got the negative going from one battery to the other battery and from there into the caravan and then the positive going from one battery to the other and out into the caravan so like i said before you want the negative and the positive terminals to be on different batteries now i could have put the negative on this battery and the positive on there and it'd be nice flow but i've done it this way just because of the wiring that's already inside the caravan it should give me a little bit more length and a little bit easier to work with now before i go ahead and i install it on and put the brackets on and everything else what i want to do is i want to just turn everything back on make sure everything works but before i even do that quickly i'm going to chuck my voltmeter on it make sure everything's all good what's a voltmeter again this one ah uh, they're really sharp There's 12 volts there Twelve volts. Twelve volts. And twelve volts. Well, thirteen volts really. Right I guys, let's go in and turn it on and see if I did it right, eh? Now guys, before I go and turn it on, I need to change my battery charger to let it know I'm running lithium. I've read through the user manual. What it says, some dip switches in there, which I need to change. So let's get access to the dip switches. In this projector system, to get access to the dip switches. What I need to do is take this cover off here. So a couple of little screws there. Now I've taken that out, I can have access to the dip switches. It's actually quite hard to see where the dip switches are because you can't really see them. You can see just here, it shows you the state of the dip switches, but the dip switches themselves are back in here. So it's gonna be really tricky for me to work out. It's really gonna be, it's gonna be really tricky for me to show you how to change the dip switches, but just so you know that in this projector system, the dip switches are just here and that's tells you which way is on and off so now i've got to change that for lithium so in this projector system there's a dip switch like i showed you and now the first two dip switches is to deal with how much amp hours you want the charger to be for and the second two dip switches is the type of battery i've read through the manual and it shows me that to be the map because i got 240 amp hours of battery power so I, for 200 amp hours is one and two is off which i've done which which it was already and for lifepo the uh dip switch three should be on and dip switch four should be off which is what i've done already too so now that i've got that done i gonna put that all back to bed and turn it on there you go you can see it's working fine and there we go we have lights all right that's great news back outside and mount them all into the battery box so i can't quite get them both up with one on the ground what i can definitely do because they're so light these batteries i can pop that one up and chuck this one in this way i can put them both in Done. all right guys both the batteries are in now i just got to clamp them up and uh tidy up a bit of wiring should be good to go
All right, guys, that's me done. My van is now 240 amp hour lithium. How good is that? Now, a couple of things before I close up the video. You will notice when I installed my batteries, I only had terminal covers on two of the terminals and not in all four of them. So I will have to get some terminal covers for the, the, for the cables that are linking the two batteries together. It's just a good practice, I reckon, to cover the terminals, especially when they're outside like that. And the only reason I haven't put it on already is because I just didn't have it on me. It's one of those things when you start doing the job and you realize, oh, I needed this. And back home, I'd have all this stuff already in my van, but obviously I didn't, we're on the road. But I will fix all that up when I get the shunt and install the shunt. So I'll take everything out, put my shunt in. I might do a video of that if you guys are interested in that, how to install a shunt. So then I, that way I can monitor a lot more accurately about everything that's going on in my lithium batteries. And the other thing worth mentioning is that there has been new rules put in and that means that if you're upgrading to lithium even in an old caravan you have to comply with the new laws and that means that the batteries have to be an enclosed space that is vented outside if they're mounted outside like mine that's all fine as but the battery chamber cannot be vented to the inside living space that goes for caravans motorhomes and everything. So that is why most van manufacturers are just chucking them outside now, probably the easiest way to do it. But you can still install them inside. You just have to make an airproof enclosure that is vented to the outside only. But once again, if you're not familiar on the laws surrounding the installs, you should probably get a professional to do the work for you. Anyways, guys, I'm Elvie. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you got something out of it. I'll catch you on the next one. See you.